joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord, love, hearts and fold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above, melt the clouds of gloom and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away, giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the alive within this sanctuary here today, sensing that divine emanation that is moving from different dimensions into expression through each and every one. I know that today is a blessed experience that God is having as each and every one of us, for the music comes from the celestial realms, the words come from the heart and the soul of God itself, and today is a blessed experience, a day in which one is to celebrate the rising awareness of the greater understanding, the presence of God personified and personalized with our individual realm. So I know right now there is a receptivity, there is a sensing, there is an opening and a receptivity to the magical, mystical expression that is about to unfold through this morning's expression that we are creating together. For today it is about you, the rising triumphant within our individual lives and excited to experience the presence. We go forth joyfully rising the spirit. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> All right, it's time for joy. Are you ready for some joy? All right, let's do this. I am as God created me in the light, in the light, in the glory. That's the one part. Now, that's from here on over. That's what you're going to sing. Okay, try it. I am as God created me in the light, in the love, in the glory. Give them a hand. They did really good. All right, this middle section right here, you're going to go in the light, in the love, in the glory of God I am. Together. In the light, in the love, in the glory of God I am. Group C, I'm going to give you my favorite part. It goes, in the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, I am 
Go ahead. Okay. In the light and the love and the glory. In the light and the love and the glory. In the light and the love and the glory. I yeah. Give them a hand. They did good. Are you ready? One, two, three. I am as God created me In the light, in the love, in the glory I am as God created me In the light, in the love, in the glory In the light, in the love, in the glory of God I am In the light in the love, in the glory of God, I am my favorite. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory, I am. Sing it. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory, I am. Sing it. In the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory, I am. I am as God created me. In the light, in the love, in the glory, I am as God created me. In the light, in the love, in the glory, in the light, in the love, in the glory of God, I am. In the light, in the love, in the glory of God, I am. Come on, you guys. Who? Oh. Let's join them. Come on, everybody. Here we go. In the light and the love and the glory. In the light and the love and the glory. In the light and the love and the glory. I am. In the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, in the light and the love and the glory, I am. I am as God created me in the light, in the love, in the glory. I am as God created me in the light, in the love, in the glory. Here we go. In the light and the love and the glory. In the light, in the love, in the glory. Oh, whoa, whoa, That's Carl Anthony, isn't he fabulous? Thank you, Carl. It's what this day is about, isn't it? Joy, joy, how great it is. You do such a great job of bringing us joy. What a wonderful choir with Reverend Fran. Great band, great day, sun is shining. Uh, these suits always reminds me of Robert Schuler. We're all of the Robert Schuler generation, huh? This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice in it. How great it is. So I'm Reverend Tammy Mars. It's my joy to welcome you here today. And we're going to join together and do our responsive reading. Oh, that's going to be a little difficult. <laughs> all right. We'll improvise. The computers are down. And so all the internet and everything is completely down in this area. So normally we would have it up front there. So I'm going to do the responsive reading. <laughs> and y'all are going to feel this and embrace this, all right? So here we go. I invite you to take these words within. I am the resurrection and the life. I am illumined and my way is made clear. 
I am revealing the consciousness of wisdom and spiritual power. For the old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. I am not bound by the past. I am made new in every moment, living the life of the divine as me. For this is a new day. Through the power of the Christ consciousness, I am. I see myself in the new light, for I am unfolding in love and beauty. This is a new day. I am infinite truth. I see my strength and I count my blessings. I celebrate my eternal self. For this is a new day. Through the infinite power that I am, I release the old and behold the new. I have all that I need for a full and glorious life. Through the divine power within me, I now accept my divine inheritance. Today, I accept my wholeness in every part of my being, for I am whole, strong, free as I was created to be. I rejoice in my wholeness. Today, I celebrate the wonder of the divine life living as me. Today I am the resurrection and the life, and I rise triumph, splendid, glorious, and free. Amen. Amen. So now I'd like to invite you to stand up, say hello to those loving individuals that are here celebrating this Easter Sunday with us. So let's. Let's all get comfortable and have a seat. So good to be back with you again. Happy Easter. Kind of creating memories together, aren't we? Same time next year. Just happened to have a song called My Memories. The last thing we'll remember here on earth Is a memory we all have from birth Our life begins in a sea of bright white And it ends moving toward the light I have learned that silence speaks louder than words And laughter is still the sweetest sound I've heard I've had some painful times I still recall But I wouldn't change a thing I'd have to keep them all it's what I am, what I believe, who I become, my memory. Growing up sometimes is difficult to do. It's guaranteed to teach you something new. And as a boy, I was taught to know I can. 
I couldn't wait till the day when I'd be called a man And I think back when going out meant holding hands And breaking up was hard to understand When I fell in love, the music wouldn't end and I still hear that chorus now and then. It's what I am. What I believe. Who I become. My memories It's what I am Together It's what I am What I believe What I believe Who I become Who I become Our memories If I knew then Just a hint Of what I know now I'd put more time On who Instead of how You see I've lost some friends In unexpected ways and I think about that almost every day The last thing we'll remember here on earth Is a memory we all have from birth Our life begins in a sea of bright white and it ends moving toward the light. My memories. Wow, thank you, Carl. That was really moving. Good morning. I'm Reverend Christina Tillotson. And, and here at, at Seaside, we get to celebrate the ongoingness of life, and we get to celebrate the resurrection of that Christ consciousness within us on Easter. So I've chosen to read some things from Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our philosophy, our faith, and our way of life about that. Christ means the universal idea of sonship, of which each is a member. To think of Jesus as being different from other men is to misunderstand his mission and purpose in life. He was a way shower and proved his way to be, the, to be a correct one. His method was direct, dynamic, and powerful, yet extremely simple and easy to comprehend. He believed in God in himself as power and reality. Believing in God within, he was compelled to believe in himself. To the illumined has ever come self-realization and I amness. Who could proclaim himself to be the way, the truth, and the light unless he had understood that God indwelled his own soul? That Christ spirit comes to all alike proclaiming itself as the Son of God, even unto the humble in spirit, proud of his divinity, yet humble in the greatness of the whole. Jesus spoke from the heights of spiritual per perception, proclaiming the deathless reality of the individual life, the continuity of the individual soul, and the unity 
of universal spirit within all men. I am, what more can I, can, what more can I say? I am, it is enough, because thou art, I am. From the depths of me, I am. In and around me, I am. Over and through me, I am. O inner being, eternal and blessed, complete and perfect, birthless and changeless and deathless, I am. I am. I am and evermore shall be. And now it's my honor to introduce the choir.
Amazing. Let's hear it one more time for our choir. Good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Sunshine Day, and it is a joy to be here with you on this beautiful Easter morning. Today's reading is taken from an article written by Dr. Edward Villon. And he writes, when I was younger, I was frustrated about this part of the story. I wanted Jesus to take control of the situation. When I studied metaphysics and learned how to pray in an affirmative way and manage the world around me, I mistakenly thought that I had full control of the universe. And my question for Jesus persisted, why don't you just pray it away? Now for me, the answer is because you simply can't. If you've ever been in a relationship that should have ended, but you stayed in it anyway, and you stayed in it even though you knew it was destroying you, then you know something about this feeling. It's got to end even though you don't want it to, and you know it. Well, Jesus had just completed Passover dinner, and he took two of his students, Peter and James, into the garden, and he asked them to stay with him as he prayed. And he began, the gospel says, he became deeply depressed and troubled and said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And that is when he fell to the ground on his, faith and said, on his face and said, oh God, I know that everything is possible. And if it's possible, I would prefer not to have to go through this. And yet, it is not my will that prevails, but yours. And that's the part of the story that metaphysicians, like me and you, don't like. <laughs> we don't enjoy hearing about it. And some of us even stop listening to the message. But it is a powerful reminder that when it comes to transformation, there are serious limits to what we can control and what we cannot control. And beyond that realization is a fresh awareness that everything becomes possible only when I align my will with the will of God. In other words, when I am wanting what God wants, there is indeed a resurrection. And now, to take us deeper, let us join in prayer with Reverend Catherine Economo. Aren't we blessed to have Reverend Sunshine with us as a new addition to our ministerial staff? Thank you. My goodness. Blessings. And so coming together in consciousness here, I invite you to take a deep breath and go within with me. And just feeling that love as we come together here in the spiritual family that is seaside sitting in the sanctuary, which is the heart of the spiritual community. Feeling that power and that presence that is the divine light, the divine life spirit itself breathing us. I simply know that this is that life force, that one essence and presence that permeates all things is so palpably present here in this day, that light that shines forth from within each of us, revealing all love, all peace, all wholeness, all light. For we are simply one in this truth one in this life, each individual expressions of that divine essence, truth. And so I know on this day, I know on this day of light and of celebration and of resurrection that each of us steps forth and rises up beyond any sense of limitation that we have been holding. I know that each person lives this life fully and no matter what reveals itself in our path and our journey, the divine hand of spirit itself moves through and as each of us breathing new life, new presence, new awareness, new beingness into every moment. And so there is a surrender. There is that peaceful, joyful surrender to the greater that essence that perfection that is allowing us to see beyond that which we see with our eyes 
to step beyond that which we believe to be there. And so I know in this, there is peace and wholeness. There is health and vibrance. There is joy and harmony. There is abundance and prosperity. There is God made manifest as the lives that we are living. And so this is a day of light and a day to celebrate, a day to allow for the joy of life itself to be expressed, to be felt, to be shared. And we come together in this spiritual community here to do just that, to commune on the deepest of levels, to love one another, and to, to celebrate and honor this amazing gift that is this life in this time. And so I call this truth forth. I know it to be the divine revelation of God itself. I celebrate this amazing, beautiful day and this amazing, beautiful love. And with a grateful heart, I simply surrender my word unto the law, knowing it's already done. And so it is. Amen. Sorry, I got to do it right. <laughs> Sometimes when you pray, you just go out there. Sorry. Okay, but I need to do this right because I want to honor Carl Anthony. <laughs> he is a seaside stable on our holidays. He's part of the family, and he's such a gift to us, and I'm so grateful that you're with us, and I just want to give him his moment to welcome him back to the stage, <laughs> Carl Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Easter, everyone. So I'm rising up into this new energy, this new Easter, this new spring energy with a brand new recording. It's about time, isn't it? <laughs> I'm actually calling it India. And if you want to know about that, you can come and see me at my table out outside. But let's just do something together. This is called Rise Up. All right? So I'm going to go, Rise Up. You did it really good. Rise Up. That's good. Stand Up. Wake Up. You got the words? All right. One, two. You notice that we have a horn section? Give it up for the horn section. I love Easter. Rise up. Emerge from the ashes, stand up, ignite the flame and wake up. You know your way, but the time has come, but the day's the day to rise up. Today, today's the day to rise up. Yeah, try that again. Rise up, emerge from the ashes, stand up. Ignite the flame and wake up oh, You know your way oh, The time has come Today's the day to rise up Sing that Today's the day to rise up Come on guys Whoa, hey. Rise up No need to fear Stand up Walk through that door And wake up And no more The time has come The day the day to rise up wow. The day the day to rise up Here we go The day the day to rise up <laughs> Repeat after me. We can now rise. Oh, rise up. Come on, stand up. Birds from the ashes stand up. Hit down the flame and wake up. Oh, yo. 
Seaside Band. You guys are sounding fabulous. Oh my. Woo. All right, Will. Good morning again. What a joyous day here. And uh, hey, rise up. That is truly a story of Seaside's unfoldment. I mean, last year we were looking at having to pay off a bank loan. No idea. Do we have to give our campus back? And all of a sudden Seaside rose to the occasion and took care of that and, and put that behind us so we have solid foundation to stand upon. We had our sunrise service this morning out in the gardens and it's just a garden that continues to transform and unfold. We're celebrating the garden with a wonderful dedication on the 14th plan to be there. The deputy mayor is going to be there. Supervisor Dave Roberts is going to be there. It's going to be a fabulous day. Seaside continues to rise up and it's because of you. It is because we continue to celebrate spirit. I uh, had the opportunity to hear Sri Sri Ravi Shankar uh, this week and one of the things he said was the sun rises and I celebrate. The sky embraces and I celebrate. The wind blows and I celebrate. The river flows and I celebrate. The blossoms bloom and I celebrate. And the celebration is what Seaside has continued to do. It continues to celebrate that presence in our life. And it continues in that celebration to lift us beyond where it was we were. We're able to step free from the tomb, which is this whole Easter message, is being able to push away that stone that has entombed us. And when the ladies got there in the morning, morning the angel was there. And they were looking for Jesus. And they said, where is he? And the angel said, he is not there. He has risen. He has risen up. Rise up. It seems to be a repetitive story that is going on in our lives and throughout history. And I want us to be aware as we look at this Easter story, which is profound and it is moving. And I, um, you know, I, I've been at Mount Calvary and I've been to the uh, Holy Sepulchre and I've seen where the ground cracked and, and have a deep belief in the story. But I also want us to be aware that it's not, Jesus is not the only one with this story. You can find engraved on the walls of Karnak Temple in Egypt the story of Horus, which is 3,000 years predates Jesus' story about this guy, virgin birth, immaculate conception from the heavenly Father, comes forth into this world under a star, is known as the way, the truth, and the light. It's got the Trinity thing going on, you know, the, the heavenly Father is the Atman, the the Son is Horus, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is Ra, the, the Sun God. He was taught as a child in the temple. He became a man at baptism at 30. He was buried in um, a seamless gauze uh, and rose again, was associated with the cross. You know, it wasn't new there. 
there with him. The Mithra story, which some will say is the Jesus story, you'll find in the tombs, the catacombs of the Roman catacombs, 450 B.C., the story of Mithra, born of virgin birth, was a savior, was known as the light, was crucified on a cross and rose three days later. Krishna died on a cross and rose three days later. was on a cross between two thieves. What I want us to be aware of is that the story has repeated itself in the Easter celebration. It continues to be known as a time of breaking the shell, breaking out of the tomb. The, the rabbits are doing their thing, you know. It is the new life that is going on there. And what's important for me to get is that this is a repetitive story from the very beginning of recorded history. There's got to be relevance. There's got to be truth. And it may or may not be the historical unfoldment, but there is a spirit that is more alive than the historical facts. There is a spirit that if you have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the heart to feel, you will know it is your story. It is you that can rise triumphant above whatever challenge or tomb that you have, whether it is pain, whether it is body challenges, whether it is guilt, whether it is sorrow. The story is about you rising triumphant. You want to hit it big in your life? Then you got to bring the big you to the party. Because i got to tell you what, there will be challenges in this world. But anyone who's in the game has got the challenges. That's why you're in the game. If it was easy, you would have won before you got started. You're in the game. You've got to bring the big you to the game if you want the big results in your life. And as I begin to realize, as I step into this world as an expression of that divine expression and that light, that I can rise to whatever is put before me because it is the spirit within. Got that? It's the spirit within. When I know that, when I have faith in that spirit, that it's, you know, it's not me, the little me, it's the big me that I've brought to the game. When I have that kind of faith, it's like, oh, apricot brandy warming my veins. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm no longer on this rickety ladder thinking this is the only way to roll that stone away from that which has entombed me. You know, I got to let go of the leaky lifeboat knowing that there's a cruise ship coming my way. Or a dinghy or a dolphin or something that's going to show up in that final moment. Because what I know about spirit is spirit loves to love. That's what God does. It is love. That's what the resurrection story is about. It is not about getting love. It is about giving that sun. It is giving that light. It is about sharing that love in this world. That's the joy that comes when you're in that place of giving. I watch many people who think it's about getting love, being appreciated. We watch on the tabloids and magazines people who are adored and loved and yet they are not putting the love out there and they're miserable. That's what this story is about, is that flow of love. And what happens is we get distracted from sharing our light, rising triumphant. What happens is we get distracted by our pain and our guilt and our challenges and our scarcity or whatever it is we're doing in this world. And that becomes the tomb that we are imprisoned by and the guilt that holds us in there. The distractions are in this world. It's like murking up the water. It is the turbulence that is going on. Al Gore, in his um, uh, latest TED Talk, talks about we are in a distraction-oriented society. He talks about that you know, we are distracted by our challenges or our struggle or our love, that we're not paying attention to what is going on out there in the world or on the planet. We are distracted by just being comfortable enough that you know, we're not trying to see, you know what, maybe there's an issue with the monetary system. Or we're not distracted by... I'm comfortable so I don't look at what's going on on the planet. I mean, Seaside, the women's group, is hosting a wonderful um, thing that Lynn Twists puts out, the Pachamama Alliance, on Friday, April 12th here. We're going to share a movie and do a symposium, and it's just, it's a powerful thing. What we want to do is no longer allow ourselves to be distracted by the ways of this world and rise above what is calling you, which is the pain, is the difficulty that keeps you stuck. See, this message is about you. There was um, a a young girl whose parents had died and she was living with her grandmother in a small rural town. And one late night, 
a fire broke out in the house and it consumed the downstairs very quickly and the grandmother in trying to save uh, the granddaughter who was in her bedroom upstairs perished in the fire. And by that time the town had gathered around the house and it was engulfed in flames and they could hear the little girl crying out upstairs crying for help and there was nothing they could do and they were just told at that moment that the fire department was going to be delayed because they were at another fire. And as they're sitting there wondering what to do, out of the darkness comes a guy who brought a ladder. He put it up against the side of the building and climbed up the ladder and went in through the window into the smoke-filled house. And the next thing you knew, they saw the, his shadow, his image coming out of the window with his little girl's arms draped around his neck, him holding on, coming down the ladder. And he passed it off to the waiting hands below. And he disappeared into the night, never to be known who this guy was. Well, in the weeks that followed, the town gathered trying to find out who would be the rightful you know, guardian for this child, and there was no family left. And so the town held a town hall meeting to see who would you know, be the parent or the guardian to assist this child into life. And one teacher stood up and said, you know what, I'm an educator, and I can give her a good education, and I would be happy you know, for her to be part of my home. And then a farmer stood up and said, you know what, I, I'll... I'll take her to farm my life as a good life, as a hearty life, it is satisfying, it is healthy. And then the other people stood and said why it would be appropriate for them to be that child's guardian or parents. And finally, the richest person in the town, the most affluent, stood up and said, I can give this child all those things and even more. I can give them the money to support themselves the rest of their life. He kind of fell quiet and the chair asked, is there anything anyone else has to say? And from the back of the room, in walked a man that nobody really recognized. He had a gait about him that showed pain. And he came to the front of the room, and this little girl had not been watching. She'd been looking at the floor the whole time. And he held out his hands. And the room just gasped, because his arms were scarred and charred from fire, and his hands and his arms. And the little girl picked her head up and looked at him and said, this is the guy who saved me, and leaped into his arms, wrapped her arms around his neck like the night she was saved, just buried her head into his shoulder and started crying. And then picked her head up and looked at him and smiled. And the chair said, meeting adjourned. <laughs> I want us to be aware that we will be distracted in our life from time to time. We will be distracted by, maybe it's this opulence, or maybe it's this one. But let us stay quiet and not allow the distraction to take us away from that connection. Because what happens is this world fills our mind and our subjective with the pictures that we begin to believe are the real. And we forget to listen to that something that is far greater than anything that is in this world. That's something that says you can rise triumphant above this time and above these kinds of distractions. That you need not be bound that the challenges and the difficulties become mindful of them. You do not have to say they did not exist, but a mindfulness is learning from that. It is absorbing it. It is seeing. It is growing and evolving from where it is you have found yourself as you roll that stone away from the tomb and free yourself, forgive yourself, and allow yourself to rise up from the ashes. A classic story is St. John of the Cross which you may or may not know the story. The guy has got the dark night of the soul theory down. He left it for us all to, to learn from. But here he is trying to change the Carmelite order. Of the, uh, the Catholic Church was, was not appreciated. His superiors or higher-ups took him, and they threw him in a jail in Toledo. Not like jails that we have, but in a four-by-eight room underneath a stairwell that was once the latrine. And every day they pulled this guy out into the public square at noon, at lunchtime, and beat him for entertainment in front of the people. They humiliated him, would throw him back into his cell, and leave him barely closed so he didn't have enough warmth to make it through the winter. Nine months later, he escaped and held out at St. Teresa of Avila's covenant. And there he had the mystical experience. There he had to decide whether he was going to rise up from this dark night, from this injustice, from this anger, 
from this humiliation? Was he going to allow himself to let go of the injustice and the anger by choosing forgiveness and love? And when he did, the shift took place. And what I want us to get is that the forgiveness is a mystical directive. It's not a logical choice. Oh yeah, I'm going to love this person who beat me in front of everybody. It is a mystical directive that said, I know that there's something that can free me from this tomb. I will choose to forgive whether I'm going to forgive another person or whether I need to forgive myself for the mistakes I've done. But Chris, oh, the mistakes I've done. How? No, you know, forgiveness. See, we transcend. We rise up. That is the spiritual principle that came through Horus, Mithra, Zoroaster, and all, I can give you 20 of these guys that have the same story of rising up after being crucified. It is a spiritual story about you if you have the eyes to see. To free yourself, your wounds are your tomb. And every time you go back to that wound, you're entering into the tomb that has stale air and you're breathing and getting sucked in and the life-sucking energy becomes more prevalent each time you go back. You're the one who must unearth that tomb by forgiveness, by love, by surrender. You know, Ernest Holmes is the founder of religious science. He, he teaches in the science of mind that, um, that the spirit is within you and it cannot be separated from you. See, you're not apart from spirit, but rather you are a part of it, and you're the one who gets to individualize its expression in your life. You are the one who gets to decide how it's going to show up in your world. You know? And so what are the seeds that you're planting? You know, I am, and that spirit follows and says, yes, you are. That's how you rise up. You don't wonder, how am I going to make this happen? But you say, I am happy. You know, let's say that. I am happy. I love my life. I embrace my life. I live in joy. I rise up triumphant. And when are you going to do this? When are you going to rise up triumphant? When are you going to have love in your life? When is there going to be abundance in your life? When is there going to be freedom in your life? And as you accept that now moment, for now is the appointed moment, now is the moment in which the presence of God is able to express itself, you will begin to put into the fire of your soul and your being that which burns with fragrance. In a fire, you can throw tires and you got smoke and smog and yuck and smells horrible. Or in the fire of your soul, in the fire of your belly and your emotions, your feelings, you can throw in sandalwood and you can have the fragrance and the light and the life. You get to decide what it is you're putting on that fire that will burn in your life, that will bring into to your experience, that which is near and dear and true to your heart, or that which you have allowed to be, make you miserable. Why choose that which makes you miserable? Yeah, I, I don't know either. I, don't. <clears throat> I, I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> it looks like you had the right answer on that one. You know. but, but, you know, uh, so as you move forward, you're going to have these great hits. You're going to have these miracles. You're going to rise triumphant. You're going to pay off banks. You're going to build wonderful gardens. You're going to have successes in your life for that is now. But you're going to have the milestones in your past. And you know what? You're going to have milestones in your future. And the thing is, you're going to continue to grow. It's like you've got to bring your full self, your big self to play here. People think, oh, if I can make it. Well, you're making it every step of the way. It's time to celebrate that step. Celebrate this day. Celebrate that presence that is in your life that is seeking to unfold itself because you get to decide whether you're going to be the captive sitting in that cell or in that tomb or whether you're going to be the captain of what you're putting on the fire of your soul and your spirit and have that show up in your life. Wonderful story about a young man by the name of Jerry. Played football in Ivy League school. Well, he didn't really play football. He practiced. He was there four years, never really played football. But the coach was extremely impressed by Jerry, by his continual dedication. In four years, he never missed a practice. He was dedicated. He was loyal. Also, the coach was very impressed with his, Jerry's relationship with his dad. For whenever his dad was visiting, he'd see Jerry walking around the campus with his arm around his dad, and they were laughing, and they were joking, and having a good time. In his final year, biggest game of the year, a rivalry that's that of like Navy, Army, the game, the big game, they are, you know, <clears throat> three touchdown under, underdogs. 
A few days before the big game, knock on the door, the coach opens up, and there's Jerry looking sad. And he said, Coach, my dad died. Is it okay if I miss uh, some practices? I need to go home. Coach said, absolutely, of course. You know, if you need to miss the, the, the game on Saturday, that, that's okay also. So Jerry went. Friday night, just a few hours before the big game on Saturday, knock on the door, he opens it up, and there's Jerry. He said, Coach, I'm back. He said, I'm glad you're back. The kid says, you know, Coach, I, just, I have one favor. I've never asked any. But my one favor I ask of you, can I start the game? on uh, Saturday. Coach is taking it back. He said, I'm thinking, you know, I need all my best players. I, but, you know, in that moment, his heart, he said, yes, you can. And then and when he left, the coach couldn't sleep that night. He said, what did I say? I need all my best players in the whole game. I said, I can't start him. And game day, the band starts up. They won the toss. And next thing you know, Jerry's out there at the opening kickoff. The coach is just praying, the ball is not going to go to him. It's going to go to the other guy. First play, we'll go ahead and uh, give it to, uh, have the quarterback call the other kids, and he's done. I'm out. I'm good. Ball, end over end, goes right into Jerry's hands. And Jerry grabs that thing and starts running. And unlike the coach that thought he would fumble, he held that so tight, and he broke through three tackles and made it to midfield. The coach was so excited. He said, something's going on here. He told the quarterback to give him the ball again. Jerry busted a couple more Tackles went 20 yards down the field, and a few plays later, Jerry's the one who carried it in for his first touchdown in four years. He was so excited. Yeah, the, the coach let him play defense, and he made tackles. He blocked passes. He even had an interception at halftime. They're ahead by two touchdowns. By the end of the game, they blew the, the guys away. The underdogs would win. The mayhem in the room is like you would think of an underdog winning. And the coach sees Jerry in the corner of the locker room, his head in his hand, quiet by himself, walks over and says, kid, How'd you do that? You can't do that. You don't have the skills. You don't run fast enough. You know, you're not strong enough. He said, Coach, my dad was blind. And this is the first game he ever got to see me play. Yeah. There's a spirit that is within us that cannot die. That is what the story is about. I have been to a land that is beyond the five senses. I know it as real as these stories of the resurrection. You are immortal. You don't die to become immortal. You are immortal, as we were saying, now. A dead person doesn't live again. A living person never dies. And I know you are immortal because God is immortal, and you are a child and expression of God. Your inheritance, your, your pedigree is immortal. It's not something you earn. And so as you walk through this world, become mindful of your walk and realize that there are mistakes that are made and challenges that are had because you're in the game. Thank God you are in the game. And thank God that you have what it takes to be successful, and it's not based upon one rickety ladder. There are infinite realms of possibilities that will help you rise triumphant. And this whole resurrection story is about that, bringing that forth. It is about the givingness of God. It is about the pouring forth of that love. It is not about what it is I can get. I'm not getting so I can get. I'm getting so I can let. I can let the expression of the multi-aspects of my being, the multi-dimensional expression of spirit, bend itself into the form in which I am walking. I become that conduit from another dimension of divine expression of infinite possibilities that takes form here and now. It is about letting it. It is about you being the one who loves. That's what this story is. The tomb was rolled away because my job wasn't done. You don't think Jesus stopped growing the day he checked out of here, do you? It is like, yeah, that was a miracle. That was a milestone. But you know what? There's more in the future for him, for you, because this story is about you. The story is about you. You ask any mom, is it how wonderful it is to love your child. And that will confirm to you the power and the joy and the glory of being able to love. That's what it is about. That is what that Christ expression is, that Krishna expression, that light expression is about. For now is the appointed hour. Now is the time to step away from your tomb of whatever it has been because it is not you who is rolling away the stone. It is you who's choosing this transformational, mystical moment, that directive that says, I will forgive anything heretofore in my life that has created whatever it is. I don't need to know what it is, but I'm willing to surrender. Let go of this leaky ship, particularly if I'm stuck. Let it go. 
Yes. And you will rise up from the beginning of time. We have heard this story. And the story is not a historical event. The story is about you. God bless you on this Easter day. <clears throat> hey, let's keep it going for the wonderful Seaside Choir under the direction of our very own Katy Perry, <laughs> Reverend Fran. <clears throat> Yeah, Katy Perry wishes she were me.
Fabulous. That is the Seaside Choir. My goodness. That is beautiful. Whew. What great, great music you're giving us today. Thank you, Reverend Fran. Thank I know that countless hours you guys have put in and uh, the joy that is. So, thank you. Hey, this is the time of our service <clears throat> where we have the opportunity to share our gift, to give our love in a financial way. And I know that it's like a promissory note. It is an exchange of uh, energy that just promises that it will continue to do good. The way in which it has blessed your world, I know that blessing continues to be a promise to the world for it's taken in with good stewardship and it's sent back out into life with that kind of, of uh, commitment. And so I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward this time and uh, thank those that mail in the contributions when you cannot be here on a Sunday. Thank you who participate with the auto tithe, the regular systematic support from your world into Seaside. And thank you to our online viewers, 9 o'clock service. You've never had that before, and it's fun. Thank you for your support also. Um, I, I share this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that the blessings of the Spirit moves through this abundant moment through each and every one. For the divine unfoldment of Spirit has its way here and now, and I am grateful to stand witness to that wellspring, to that upspringing of that divine abundance. For my security comes from living within that God vibration, and it is within that divine frequency that the abundance comes in ways that are right and real and relevant. And so I stay open to that expression of the givingness of nature of God itself and find that which has come into my world is mine to share. And so I've come here with a joy and a light and a love, and I send this forth in that kind of way. And so it is. Amen. And together, let us say our affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the living and giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. The joy, the celebration of Seaside. And as we stand here as a witness to this abundant outpouring of love, I know right now that today is a confirmation of that Christ expression, which is the pouring and the giving and the letting of that divine presence have its way in our individual lives. And truly, this bounty has been received in joy and in good stewardship. It has taken and set forth into action and work for our promise to these notes is to do God's work with it. Excited to be part of that divine channel and avenue and vortex of the abundant flow that has moved through our lives. I am just say thank you to the most abundant, generous community there is. And so it is. Amen. All right. 
Thank you, Reverend Tr Trudy. Thank you, our board president. Guys, you are rocking the house today. That is the fabulous <laughs> band bringing those extra voices. <laughs> Choir, fabulous, over the top, best ever, man. 6 a.m., 9 o'clock, we're going, Reverend Fran, great job with that. Hey, and special thank you to my brother, Carl Anthony. Hey, hey, all right, send with his sister. Who's on number? Thank you, and I'm excited about your new CD. That would be fabulous. And how fun to have the wonderful Reverend Sunshine with us on a Sunday morning, bringing that light. Dr. Christina, joy to share a Sunday with you. Reverend Catherine, joy to share with you. Reverend Tammy, 20 years of Easter's together. What a joy that is. Giving us sound is Ed. Giving us visuals is Steve, Tim. Thank you. I could keep going. Like flowers. Oh, my goodness. These uh, lilies are just so beautifully gift from Reverend Tammy and Rick. Thank you for that. And these are very special. Um, Adriana, just thank you, you and your son Andrew, give them in honor of Andrew's um, dad and your husband, who four years ago today made his transition, and uh, so we see that beauty that is indicative of his spirit that is alive and, and fills this house. So, ah, Seaside is a great spot, that's for sure. There's so much good going on. Um, you know, Thursday, we're starting a new ministry here. Come out at 10 o'clock. It is, we're creating a special ministry for special needs. It is the launch of it, and we're getting together in conversation. So it's in your program. Read about that. Also, next um, Saturday, we're cleaning up the gardens because we're having a big celebration of our gardens, ribbon cutting, as you heard, Deputy Mayor and everybody on the 14th. So next Saturday, uh, we're organizing a cleanup out there to get that looking good. But I see eggs out there, but, so I better stop talking. I just want you to know that uh, we're celebrating 25 years. We're launching it starting next Sunday with our Silver uh, uh, Circle uh, Club. You can see some of that information out there. It, it's actually, you can preview it today. But what I want to do is get our children out there for the eggs. I told everybody to wear their Easter bonnets, so I have got my bowler hat, and I'm joining these kids. And uh, I, I'm going to pray, and then you guys can just head out there as fast as you can to get your eggs any order you want. Don't tell... Debbie, I told you that, but, yeah, and uh, Reverend, and uh, Debbie, thank you. This is your last Sunday as head of our youth and family program, and so we bless you for, for the wonderful guidance you have given. And we see Reverend Lori sitting amongst the children who will be taking over the baton as of today, so, and I see new moms in the mix, how fun that is to see. But I'm going to pray right now with the joy, with the love. And any of the children that are out there, come join this crew, for truly today is a blessing. It is a celebration of the rising triumphant. It is an Easter celebration of the new day, of a new dawn, of a new possibility, of stepping free of the tomb, rising from the ashes. And you pick the analogy, just claim it, because it is the message from the beginning of the time that confirms the healing that takes place in our life in ways that are right and relevant. And excited to stand here in this vortex of the divine emanation, bringing forth the frequency of that God channel I know right Right now, there is that shift that is going on. The healing is taking place. The stone is being rolled away from the tomb. And God is having its way. For I know it is not my will, but thy will. And healing happens. Every prayer in our prayer request chest is answered. Every prayer lifted into consciousness time is fulfilled. Take anybody who is near and dear to your heart that is going through anything that is less than divine. And know that spirit has its way. And the perfect healing of perfect relevancy finds its way into their life. For when there is love, there surely is the presence of God and healing takes place. And I'm grateful to be part of a community that knows this, that celebrates together, that comes together at holidays and fun times and family times and good times and tough times and loving times and yucky times. For truly, we are a community that celebrates life together in all of its aspects. So grateful to be part of a thriving, growing, rising spiritual community where love and kindness and comparing... Uh, caring is the driving essence of life, and healing takes place here. I let go. I trust. I believe in the divine right action, and I find that cruise ship comes on in. And so it is. Amen. I release. I release. Yeah. I release. I release. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. I did not know the love of God was at hand. But now I can say, if you are discouraged and 
trying to make it through just one more day. You gotta let it go, let it all go. Whoa, and this is what we have to say. Come on, I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I. Only here for God There's no more struggle No more strife With my faith I see the light I am free In the spirit Yes I'm only here For God You know I release And I let go I let the spirit Run my life In my, in my heart it's open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle. There's no more strife. With my faith, I see the light free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Now, see, so you get to sit. No more struggle, no more strife. I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here. Guys, let's go get some eggs, man. Everyone, let's go. One, Come on. Easter bonnet, Bob. Two. With all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest lady. Thank you. 